Hey, let me show you some very cool Cubase gain staging hacks that I work with every time. And that makes my gain staging process fast and efficient. Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris Tillium here from Mixdown Online. All right, so gain staging, this is like an important aspect as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, recording and mixing. Now, I'm not gonna dive into all the details of what gain staging is because I've made a few videos already on this, which I'm gonna link down below, which are all about gain staging while mixing and also while recording. Again, the links are down below. But for this video, I wanna show you what I use in Cubase to gain stage a session so I can keep things rolling because, you know, to be honest with you, I don't want to spend a lot of time gain staging a session. I want this process to be as fast as possible. And with these tools, I'm able to gain stage a session within like five minutes, maximum 10 if I'm working on a huge session, but not more than that. And that is plenty of time to gain stage a session. Now in this Cubase session, I have some recording, uh, some are from uh, virtual instruments and others are just an import of a sample library. Uh, and this is what I get. And as you can tell, even like at looking at the wave files, everything seems to be pretty loud. And that happens a lot with virtual instruments and sound libraries. I don't know why, but they love to push it to the max, the maximum level possible. But the problem that creates for me is this. We're not gonna hear any sound, but look at the meters. Now on paper, uh, the uh, all the, the channels are not peaking, okay? There are below zero dBFS. But my problem is my master output is so loud. Uh, it's speaking, it's way too much, and I don't have enough headroom to start my mix, okay? I can bring all those faders down if I want to, you know, and uh, start from there. But now, uh, if I do so, I'm gonna lose resolution. And for this only, I like to gain stage my session. It goes way more than that, you know? Uh, and if you wonder what resolution is, it's like very simple. If I keep my fader right near the zero point, you know, the unity point of the channel, I have way more space between dBs than if I uh, go from, let's say I want to get down by 10 dBs at the bottom of the channel, I have less space to work with opposed to up near the unity point. Okay, so this is the resolution of a channel. So if I keep all of my channels down, it's gonna work. I'm gonna be able to mix my uh, my song anyways, you know, but, you know, just less resolution to work with. And for me, I like it better, easier to work with, especially for automation when my faders uh, have more resolution to play with. But the main reason why I think it's important to gain stage is to not overload the master bus and also not to overload some plugins. Most plugins are gonna be okay, you know, but the ones that are modeled after analog gear, if they are well modeled, they might peak because the sweet spot as far as the level goes in analog is not the same as in digital. Again, you can watch my video when I talk about this, but for the most part, since I am working with analog gear while I mix, it's very important for me to have a very good game structure when I mix so I don't overload my analog gear. So gain staging is very important as far as I'm concerned. Now the first thing that I have on my side is my meters. They are colored in a way that I can easily gain stage my session. So look at my meters, the colors on my meters. I have like shades and I also have like a drastic change of color which will indicate uh, the minimum level I want to bring my tracks at, okay, which is minus 18 dBFS, which is going to be the equivalent, uh, more or less, um, of zero VU on a VU meter, which is found on most analog equipment, which is basically the sweet spot as far as the level goes uh, to not overload an analog gear. Okay, so that is zero VU. So that's why minus 18 dBFS. So if I go into Cubase, go to preferences, go down to a metering and then appearance, I have my meter. Um, the one that I select is of course the channel meter. Okay, but there are several other meters that could be for another video. Uh, uh, but for this one, I'm focusing on the channel meter and the colors that I have here. This is not the default colors that comes with Cubase. So I customized uh, those colors to my taste. Um, so I have like a drastic change of color at minus 18, and I have a, the, the start of another color at minus 12. And I also have like 
the level I don't want to go past, which is minus six dBFS, which is in red. So basically the trick is to uh, get close to my minus 18 point, uh, but by swimming into the green and yellow of my channel. So this way I know that I'm in between minus 18 to minus 12, sometimes minus 10 uh, on peaks. Okay, so the average levels will stay around minus 18 dBFS, which is what I'm aiming for. And visually speaking, it makes it very fast to gain stage. And the first thing I can do to gain stage is to bring down in volume all the waveforms, the recordings that I have in my session by using clip gain. So let's try this out. I'm gonna select them all and bring them down. And look at what I have on my, on my meters and go according to the colors that I see, and then I can readjust per track what needs to be readjusted, okay? So like that first drum channel. And also the pads are pretty loud, so I'm gonna bring them down just a bit, you know? And you know, if you look at my stereo output, now my level is pretty much okay, I get lots of headroom, and I'm good to go. So this is one way I can do so. Now, something to note is all of my faders are at unity point to give me an exact reading uh, on my levels. But if for some reason, not all of my channels are at unity point, uh, and I wanna monitor the incoming signal, I can just right click on my mixer, go down to global meter settings, and just uh, make the uh, meter position to input, okay? And this is what's gonna happen. Even if I bring down my faders, I still gonna see uh, the, uh, the level of the recording only. Okay, so it's uh, pre-fader in a way, but it's more than that, it's pre-everything, basically. It's the exact level that I have on my recordings. And by doing clip gain, I will see the effect also because it's kind of part of the recording in a way. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep that to post panner or post fader, bring everything to, uh, to unity point, to zero. And if you don't like to play around with clip gain, not a problem because another very cool way to gain stage a session is to use a pre-gain in Cubase. I'm gonna go on my mix console and I'm gonna make sure that my pre-tab is open. If you don't see the pre-tab, just click on, the, uh, on top on racks and make sure the pre is checked on. And that will bring you the gain level of each track, which will come before the inserts, before everything on that channel. Uh, so this is a very cool way to, uh, to gain stage your session. So in that case, what I could do uh, to start with, if I have like a bunch of tracks, I select all the tracks that are loud and too loud that needs to be brought down. And uh, I'm just gonna, in my case here, click on the quick link on top and just bring down the gain all at once, and then I can fine tune with all the single channels to make sure that everything is well gain staged. And there you go, that fast. They didn't take me a lot of time, you know? Pretty straightforward and I'm good to go. So this is in a case where uh, you don't wanna use a clip gain you don't want to mess around with the looks of your waveforms, uh, which can be understandable. You know, sometimes you want to get good resolution when it comes to the visual of your uh, your waveforms and your recordings. And uh, doing it with pre-gain will do the trick very well. And I tend to reach like pre-gain, the pre-gain knob a lot when I gain stage. And sometimes depending on the tracks, I'm just gonna reach to for clip gain and that will do the trick also. Sometimes you'll be dealing with some um, like very dynamic tracks, like a vocal, for example, where maybe one part of the vocal like reaches, I don't know, minus four dBFS and the rest is near the minus 18 or minus 12. Uh, in that case, when you uh, what you can do now, I don't have a vocal with me, but just to show you, uh, you can actually manually bring down uh, or clipping down one part of a, uh, an audio event. You select the event, you click on your draw tool, and you can actually bring down one section of that event manually. Very cool. You know, so let's say this part is too loud, I can actually bring that down. 
And if I need to bring down the whole file, you know, the whole event, I can do it as a whole, and it's gonna keep into consideration the little manual automation I just added on this uh, event, which is quite nice. So that can actually be practical and very useful in some cases. So now at this point, once my gain staging is done, I can start to doing my rough mix or my balance mix and start mixing my song, you know? And I'm good to mix into analog gear without any worries. I'm not gonna overload the gear and not overload my analog type plugins also. And most importantly, I'm not gonna overload my master bus and even my, my master bus is gonna stay at zero. I'm not gonna even touch the fader of my master stereo mix bus. It's gonna stay at unity point all the way through my mix. Now, the trick here is not to overanalyze too much when you gain stage. Don't look at the numbers that much. Just go with the average level. Uh, by setting up your meters this way, it's gonna be very fast to uh, make sure you're in the ballpark without, you know, keeping too much focus on all the numbers and focus too much on the minus 18 mark point. You just like do it fast. Stay in between minus 18 to minus 12, minus 10 for a dynamic um, a signal that peaks a lot, you know, if you keep yourself into that range, you will be fine. And by using these tools, you'll be able to gain stage very fast without putting lots of time <laughs> into this process, which shouldn't be very long to work on. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to dive into more details when it comes to gain staging while recording, you can watch this following video where I explain to you my whole process when it comes to recording so I don't have to gain stage that much when mixing a song that I recorded. Leave your questions and comments below. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care and see you.